We just topped LCS with Pendulums. Let's go. 400 plus players. We finished 6th in Swiss. I end up losing in top 16. I'm going to show you guys the full tournament report. From round 1 to round 5 to round 9 to round everything. And top cut. And everything you guys need to know if you want to play Pendulum in this format. Before we get into this video, I want to give a massive shout out to Hani to luxury, to pack, and I want to give a massive shout out to the biggest Black Friday sale in the history of the internet, in the history of Trip Gaming. The biggest sale I've ever had in my entire website is going down this week right now. You get a special Black Friday only package where I'll be giving you guys three play mats, three Trip play mats. We're talking Magician, the Remy Court, uh, Endymion, Celine, Servant. You don't know, it's a mystery. You get three play mats for the price of of two so go get yours right now tripgaming.com this sale will last up until monday so go get it right now it's time to show you a pendulum in action let's go before we get into this video i do also want to mention that i went swimming earlier in the day and my eyes in this video they're red no i'm not baked out of my mind i just have a bunch of chlorine in my face and my eyes so my eyes look a little red so bear with it because this, these next 10 rounds of commentary, if you're a Pendulum player, this is going to change the way you look at Pendulums forever with all the big brain plays and incredible comebacks. Let's go. And let's get it. Round one, I get a complete buy. No one shows up round one, so we're 1-0 right now. Now we're going into round two. Everyone got buys round one, just how the tourney worked. Round, we're going fast forward the whole way, so you guys got to stay at, at my speed. We got to catch up with my speed. Let's go. So now we're going into this game, and my opponent shows up seven minutes late. So I get a game one buy, game one win. Now we're going straight to game two. My opponent knew exactly what I was playing, and he sided in the anti-spell. So this is really sad because we got to deal with an anti-spell, but it doesn't matter because guess what? You Are you going to give up to a little anti -spell? Do you think the pen god is going to give up to a little bit of an anti-spell? I ain't scared of an anti-spell. Maybe it'll stop us for a little bit, but it ain't going to save him. It ain't going to save him. Nothing's going to save him. Because he's playing Sword Soul. And I've said at the beginning of the tournament, I actually hope I face 8 Sword Soul the whole whole way. The, this, the, the, like, the engine that's winning him the game here is not Sword Soul, it's Anti-Spell. Anyways, we're going to about to side deck for the next game. I want you guys to see something. He has two set spells, right? I know one of them is the Icarus attack, but the other is a Chalice. I thought it was a Droplets. So what does that mean? Post side deck, I'm not playing around Nibiru because I'm just assuming this man does not have hand traps and he has go second spells. Now, there's scenarios where you can play around everything. But I want you guys to see something I do here. I, I chalk this up to a misplay. I could play around Nibiru very easily, but I couldn't play around Droplets. So I'm going to show you guys a little misplay I did over here. And I'm learning this deck as I'm playing. As I'm playing this whole tournament, I learned some crazy things. And that's what you guys are going to need to focus. I, what I need to do at this point is I need to not normal summon the Joker. That was a misplay. If I did not normal the Joker, I could have popped my double Iris with Brone to floor, get up, set up double uh, pen graph. Uh, so sometimes, do not normal the Joker, and that's when I realized it. Who would think to not normal summon a Joker? The pen god. That's who. It, a lot of times, you do not, you should not pen summon the, the Joker. You should not normal summon the Joker. You should pen summon the Joker. I know it sounds brick or, or neg, but just sometimes you have to. My opponent opts to not Dark Ruler because he thinks Droplet's Imprint will be enough to stop me. And it will be enough to stop me. And he's trying to kill me. He knows that I'm playing Pendulum. I got three cards in and I got scales. If my man here does not kill me this turn, he is fucked. And guess what? That is exactly what he is. So he's going to keep going here. And I think we have plenty of time in the round. Uh, so he's going to go. He's going to do his best to try and kill. But, man, it's just not going to be enough against the best deck, especially with T.J.R. Magician getting a draw. I'm going to start my turn with five cards. So th there's not much that he could do in that scenario. He's going to get rid of everything. Uh, he makes a mistake by attacking. He meant to attack the other, I believe. I go, uh, Scythe has to go come at the end phase. I set up a Barone to floor. I just bait all his cards. Instantly, I know, okay, I'm just going to go for game right now. I cannot let my man here have a turn. So I just pen summon everything. The duel's over at this point. He had to kill me last turn. That was his only chance. He had to kill me. So there, I'm going to go add. I'm calculating game here. I'm going to do some insane amounts of damage. Time star on this. So what I end up doing here is time star to double damage with purple poison at 3,600 attack. So 3,600 attack uh, minus 20, 26 is 52. Uh, it's 5,200 damage just on that alone. But I completely forgot the effect of the Chen Ying. I'm like, I'm literally an idiot. I forgot the effect of Chen Ying. I blew this game just like that. What a massive mistake. Anyways, I end up searching uh, Chronograph with Celestial. He lightning storms my back row, and I'm so sad. Uh, I protect my Oath with Time Star. I made sure to search Celestial with Chronograph just in case. Look at our life points here. All I know, I need just need to survive. 
My opponent here is trying to kill me, and that's his only goal. So I want you guys to see something cool here. He uses this to send both. He's about to attack for game. My Celestial Ad saved the day. Chronograph effect is special. Oh my god, that was so insane. And then obviously here, this this will be enough. All I got to do, so this card cannot be destroyed by battle with an effect monster. Could be destroyed by effect. So I use Pro Poison effect to destroy it. Attack for game. Oh, what a duel. That was that was actually incredible. So we are now 2-0 in this tournament, and we're gonna go on to round three. This is my round three. This is an interesting match as well. Now, one thing you can't really tell uh, as you're watching, but we're facing against the uh, Lyrilus Tri Brigade deck, the bird deck. But my opponent is playing a little bit slow as we duel. Obviously, it's my turn, but when we get this turn, I'll explain a little bit. He told me later he was pretty new to the deck. But here, you guys want to see my hand here? Uh, this I. I you're going to find so many new plays with this deck to how to play around hand traps, okay? So, I felt... Look, he, he has a Nibiru Imperm. Sometimes there's not much you can do to a Nibiru Imperm, right? But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pen some. This was, this was an error. This was an error. I go straight to Bron the floor, right? And I realize late. I'm like, I don't want to waste my normal summon because I want to normal summon and get the harmonizing. So, I go Needle Fiber here. And there's not much you could do here to Nibiru Imperm. There's really not. I do the best I can. Then he hits me with a nib. I'm like, that's really sad. Nib imperm. We saw that coming. But you know what? It's all good because we specifically saved the alliance to get the pen graph. So that's what you want to save your alliance for, especially under pen call because it's going to be able to send two cards. So it's important to do that. My opponent plays Casa Designator in the deck. And as you guys know, I've been saying this for a long time. Casa Designator is some ass. He doesn't have any plays because of my pen graph. I'm going to pop both. I'm going to get a harmonizing to hand. Pop, add. Oh, beautiful. Joker, get that out. Celestial, get more plus, get more plus, Time Star, get more and more plus, Joker. I'm trying to get as much as humanly as plus as humanly possible. And uh I go attack, attack, attack. Yeah, look at uh, to play around another nib. That way I could special chrono in the battle phase to play around nib. If you had nib, he would use it right away. Uh it's a little big brain play there to ensure victory. Now we're gonna go to game two. My opponent's up. He has Ash Imperm and what looks like full combo here so uh, at the moment we have no side cards we need to draw something we'll see if we can we're 2-0 in this tourney and we want to win this we want to win this i'm uh, so my opponent you could, uh, i think he could have done a lot better play there but we have imperm revolt ash uh rugal so go prosp the beauty of prosp is it searches all your side cards and it baits ash so that's ash we pen call get tuning magician and we're all set up so we got to deal with Imperm Revolt. At this point, this should be quite easy. So we go Oath Iris. He's going to opt to banish our Oath. Now this hurts us a lot. This puts us at a really bad position. Because our Oath Dragon's banished now, uh, we have to stick with the Sork and the Scale. And because Sork's in Scale, Tuning Magician won't do much. So now we're not in a good position. So we have to play around the Imperm. He sets those. We, we pen two. We put up Brone de Floor ASAP. And not many people understand that Harmonizing and Oath get the Brone de Floor that easily. So in this scenario... Uh, we're gonna pop. We're gonna clear his entire board and know uh, and know that we have a Brunda Flores follow up. We get the Skarm effect to add at the end phase. Normal fractal effect. We're gonna negate. He's gonna imperm. I saw the imperm coming, but it's fine. All we're gonna do here is just survive because we have great follow up and we're gonna win the duel. So uh, he goes for that. He gets nervous the whole time. I'm thinking, man, I just need to don't put up too many negates. He's playing super tri brigade or uh, heavy. I go normal Joker. I get Sork, and now at this point. Uh, there's nothing you can do. Sword can scale as well. Boost everything by a lot. Get another Joker for next turn. Get another Wisdom Eye. Get out Celestial. Effect double damage. Like, he, he decides to negate that. Uh, I don't know why I did not just Joker pop the, the my own double Iris. That seemed kind of obvious that I did that. I know I wanted to pop the Sork in here. That's for sure. Because I knew I wanted uh, low scale. I should have pro I should have probably popped both to get another Celestial. That's what I should have done. I forgot that Sork... Like, I didn't realize Sork... Uh, I never used Sork to pop two. I should have used it to pop two. I enter battle phase right away to get rid of everything. All my cards are 1,000 boost. Uh, I get rid of that card so I could freely go into uh, Link plays if I wanted to. I go Time Star. Get a Double Iris. Special that from Grave. Needle Fiber. Special that out. Selene. I go Tornado Dragon. I get Appalooza. I pop my own scale. So now I'm going to be able to get a Tornado Dragon, Appalooza, and a Pangraph. And there's no way he plays around this. End phase, I get a low scale... With Joker, hand follow-up. There's nothing you can do. So we are 3-0 in the tourney right now. We're going to go to uh, round four. 
Round four over here, we're facing someone called Karma RX with a cool uh, profile picture. So we are 43 card deck. As you can tell, he's playing some form here of Hand Trap Galore with DPE. We ended up winning the dice roll again, so that's very awesome. We're going to go Prosperity, get Duelist Alliance. It's funny, actually. The first half of all my matches, I win all the rolls. The last half of my matches, when it matters, I lose all the rolls. Pretty hilarious. Anyways, here I go Pen Call. I specifically save the Duelist Alliance. At this point is when I realized in the tournament that... You don't want to put up extenders. The best way to play around Nibiru is to go Harmo, bring up uh, Oaf Dragon, Brone to Floor, Oaf, add Harmo, normal Harmo, make the Needle Fiber with the extra card. So he Veilers the Fiber. I don't activate Sork Effect. I go Needle Fiber. He hits me with the Gamma. At this point, this is totally fine. I get a follow up and I get a uh, Pen Graph popping two. This is very important. I get a Pen Graph popping for two. So now his only play here is really just Prosperity. He does not have a good play here. His hand's ass and he hits Triple Alistair. And Fusion Destiny. So Fusion Destiny is clearly his play that he's need to go to here. But it's all good. Because what's a Fusion Destiny to a Pengraph? Pengraph deals a Fusion with DPE very well. And he has the Brick there. I let him attack. I'm not going to flip out my Pengraph. He activates it. He activates his his, tra his, uh, his Phoenix Enforcer. I chain my Pengraph. Uh, so popping, popping. And then he can't actually pop anything. There's nothing on the field to pop. My turn. He activates this right away, I believe. Uh, and then uh, I'm like, that's fine. And I go pen call. And at this point, this is just GG. Uh, I still have my pen graph alive at this point. Uh, what what did I do here? Oh, yeah. I wanted to save my normal summon and my Oath Dragon. So it was a great play. I did not use Oath yet. I go this to set up Ronda Floor before my normal summon. Now my normal summon, I'm going to go straight into Needle Farber Selene Axis Code. So that's a little time star. Oh, I am. I am ass. What am I doing? All right. That was a, ma that was a misplay right there. Oh, I know. Okay, okay. So, uh, cause my earlier prosperity got rid of my second needle fiber. Okay, that's understandable. So, my earlier prosperity got rid of my second needle fiber. That's why. So, sometimes your prosperity, make sure you don't get rid of your second needle fiber. As you guys see, I'm playing prosperity, and I think prosperity is much better than desires. Anyways, I would like to say if you guys got this far, we're at round four right now. Make sure to smash the subscribe button, special like button, check out trivicomine.com for the awesome Black Friday sales. It's going to be a long video, so you need to stay tuned to the very end. It's my full LCS tournament recap. Uh, anyways, so I go time star here to get the follow up and I, I go attack attack the beauty of time star in this scenario If I wanted to I can go Zeus and I do exactly that he impers my Zeus and I don't even care uh, I just popped that right away set to nothing he can do he's gonna draw two. I'm like I'm gonna negate that he's gonna talent so I'm like that's fine He's gonna draw two more the deer. I'm like this is still fine It looks like he's in a good scenario, but he's really not he's at 2600 life points I look at my field. There's really not much you can do in this scenario so you go special Florida Lee's now look at this big brain play, okay? So Florida Lee's is gonna pop my bro on the floor, right? Look at this. Look at this Celestial magician effect get absolutely clapped. Oh my god absolutely beautiful and nothing you can do it in that scenario so we're gonna go to the next one here and uh, He is going first he said double cosmic cyclone fusion destiny his hand is absolutely absolutely cracked like look at this hand we're dealing with Makaba. We're dealing with Fusion Destiny, DPE, Double Cosmic, Ash Blossom. There's no chance I'm winning this one. He sets one Cosmic. The reason why is he's fearing evenly. And on top of that, he wants Makaba to be able to negate something. And I hit him with the Dark Ruler. Let's go. So I pen call away my Tuning Magician. And I'm like, all right, this is fine. We're still in a good scenario. Go get Oaf Dragon and then Cosmic. I'm like, oh my god. Legit, if this was just any scale, we could have clear everything and put him on one card. But it's fine. We're going to go to game three now. So game three, this is absolutely mandatory. We must win. My opponent has Nibiru and Dark Ruler. We're, we stuck with one brick in our hand. Oh, how are we going to do this? Let's see. Prosperity is going to get us Duelist Alliance. In this scenario, you have to think, man. You have to think. What are you scared of? Prosp did not get Ash. Fuck it, bro. Let's go for Brock. We go for the Ash. I want to get the Harmonizing. I'm like, screw it. If he has it, he has it. You better have it. I put normal Needle Fiber. Normal Harmo to get Needle Fiber. I get up Selene. Get up Access Code. I do not want him to get the Appaloosa, Appaloosa to stop the Nib. Oaf at Harmo. Pendulum my whole hand out. Now, if he has Nib, it doesn't matter because we're protected. And just like that, we get up the site. We get uh, that out. Set the site, get a dragster going, get a tornado going, hit that on the draw phase. He should have nibbed on my Selene, but even if he nibbed on my Selene, it just meant that this Appaloosa wouldn't be here. So his Nibiru could have been switched out for the Appaloosa. He has Dark Ruler thinking he'll be safe, but he does not. Tornado, draw phase on the site. Not even if he Dark Ruler, the site still stands. And on top of this, we have a pen graph for two pops. So there's nothing my, my man can do here. I end up just getting rid of both of these. 
and that's it. GG. There's nothing you can do. We are 4-0. We are 4-0, and we're about to go to round five. Attack for game. GG. Now, round five over here. So round five, this is like one of the most incredible comebacks I've ever seen in my life. It is remarkable. You're going to see my man's hand here is cracked. Nib Valor Fusion Destiny. Nib Valor against any combo deck is an OTK, right? It really is. I mean, it really is. The, like, the only, there is one way we can play around Nib Valor. There is one way. And that's if we hard draw Celestial Magician or if we pen call into the Celestial Magician. There is a way. There really is. It does sound pretty insane, but there's a way. So, Nib Valor, what are you going to do? Honestly, what are you going to do? Then he has Alistair and Fusion Destiny. He's he's a gamer, bro. He's a gamer. So, we're going to lose game one here. There's like there's no coming back from Nib Valor, Alistair, Fusion Destiny. He's going to attack for game. Now, if you guys thought the first hand he had was cracked, I want you guys to see his second hand. My man here has Nib Valor, Ash, and a Deer Prosperity. What the heck? How does someone play around this? But I want you guys to see this. Do you, I literally come back. Do you guys think I come, I will come back and I perhaps might win this duel? We're down 1-0 right now. Nib Valor, what are you going to do, bro? Goodbye, my friends. Oaf, add back follow-up, tuning magician effect, needle fiber. He opts to Ash the needle fiber because he doesn't want, he doesn't know what could go down. He doesn't know. Like, if he doesn't ash the Needle Fiber, what if I go Valor and put both into Verde Anaconda and get uh, DPE? So he, he ashes that, and I'm like, I don't want to even entertain that. He Dark Rulers because he's like, I don't want to deal with Desert Locusts. I don't want to deal with any of this. Let me just kill him fast. I would have saved the Dark Ruler. I would say I would have saved the Dark Ruler. But the ash is fair because I could have gone DPE very easily. He Like, he knows I'm playing a Scythe deck. He goes Prosperous for six. Of course, gets the Meltdown. Meltdown to Deer. What are you going to do, bro? Oh my god. You guys think I come back from this scenario? What do you guys think? You guys think I'm, I'm going to come back from this scenario? This is one of the greatest comebacks in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. He's going to... He has everything. Look at this. Sets up the DPE with the nib. Just like that. You get a DPE, Makaba, and he gets an Adir on top to get the Shizam. Like, like, look at this. Oh my god. Like, there's nothing. Bro, how do I even come back from this? He discards the Alistair because he wants Ecclesia as a follow-up. He's going to destroy my field, and this is my board. He has Shizam... Phoenix Enforcer, Makaba. I'm down to three cards. I have no follow-up in Grave. I have nothing. Nothing. If I come back from this, Pendulums better fucking be the best deck, bro. If I come back from this and you haven't subscribed yet, you better you better fucking subscribe. Alright, that's our deal. If I come back from this, you subscribe. Alright, so first things first, I go Carnograph. He knows for a fact that Time Gazer protects my scales. He doesn't want that. So he's op gonna opt to pop that with DPE. So, he pops out. I'm like, sure. Wisdom, bring up Oaf Dragon. At this point, he's cooked. Oaf, add Wisdom. Shizm's right away to make sure that once I pen summon, I cannot XYZ or Synchro or Link afterwards. So, he summons out Window right away. Pen summon one Skulker by Joker. Do you guys see a line of play over here that wins you the duel? I do. I saw it very clearly. Double Iris. I don't pen summon the Wisdom. I only pen summon the Joker. Double Iris effect. Get Star Pendulum Graph. Get Wisdom Eye. Get Star Pendulum Graph. Wisdom. Search your follow-up. You're not searching Wisdom. You're searching Celestial as a follow-up. Then you normal summon the, the Celestial. The Purple Poison here. Well, before you normal summon it, because its effect could be negated by the Makaba, what you're going to do here is you're actually going to use Poison's effect to boost Joker by 1,200 to make it 3,000 attack. Makaba, I know he has a monster effect. Poison cannot poison uh, destroys the Makaba first. Now, my opponent, if he wanted to, he could have actually sent the Ecclesia to the graveyard to negate the Poison and keep his Makaba. Not that it would matter, but he could have done that if he wanted to. So we're going to get rid of that, and then Windows is going to get be destroyed by Battle by Joker. And then I didn't normal summon yet this turn, so I normal Celestial activated the fact to add at the end phase, and then I go into Baguska. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over, baby! End phase, add our follow-up of Wisdom Eye. I do not get Joker, because Joker could... Uh, I don't want my... I might want to keep my Baguska in defense. Top decks Droll. Boom. Detach, look at this, and I come back from this. I'm so insane, it's wild. Star Pendulum Graph Effect, add, I get Celestial. He drolls, Oaf Dragon, add Harmonizing, Pendulum my entire hand. Now, at this point, I could have put Baguska in attack, but I don't want to risk it. Just in case, I'm like, let me clear everything on his field, and he still has to deal with the Baguska. So I go Needle Fiber, he goes Shizum. At this point, I'm like, wow, my guy plays two windows after a Prosperity for six? That's crazy. I did. That was actually, in, that's crazy. No one expects a double window 
in the deck regardless, let alone after Prosperity for six. That was insane. So I'm like, all right, I can't special, that's fine. What I'm going to do at this point is uh, I'm going to use Iris to add. I'm going to uh, attack the Winda, enter ba uh, main phase two, Selene. I, uh, I can't search Pengraph because of Droll, sadly, so I wasted my card for nothing there. Selene special. Now, at this point, I should have gone Appalooza because his card will be in deep match. I need Appalooza to negate these. But for some reason, I go access code. Access code popped the Shizum. He specials the Ecclesia with no effect, sets, draws two. So what could he possibly get? Nothing. My last turn of Baguska here. He goes Imperm on the standby uh, right away. And he also changed that to get rid of it. I'm like, all right, that's fine. Wisdom Eye, Harmo, Star Pengraph, add Harmonizing. Link these into Dagda. Specials set the card from Dagda. Selene, special with Selene. I put up Appalooza just in case he has a, a hand trap in hand. I don't know what he has in hand. I don't want to risk it. Like, what a comeback. Can you believe this? What a comeback. Uh, attack with everything. I make a massive mistake here. I forgot that all these were summoned from the extra deck. Massive error. So Ecclesia can, uh, can't be destroyed. Huge error. But that's fine. Tornado, draw phase, pop scythe. Can't do anything. Can't do anything there. And uh, there's nothing he can do. He... Uh, He's going to stall out a bit, set. I right, just normal, enter battle attack. This was an incredible match. We somehow came back from that game. Now we're going in game three here. Uh, on his turn, time will be called at turn zero. His hand's absolutely broken, as you see here. He has everything. My guy here has everything he needs. He has uh, Alistair. He has Small World. He's going to get himself Ecclesia, Maximus. Like, look at this. Like, his hand's broken. He's going to get his whole setup. Small World's really cool in this Alistair deck. Very cool in this deck because it gets Alistair or the Dogmatica engine. And it's set to, wow. He decides to keep Imperm over Droll, which is actually the correct play against Pure Pen Magicians. So this is the scenario we have. Prosperity. I don't Lava Golem right away. I'm trying to bait him into bringing out his Winda. And that's when I'm going to Lava Golem him. That's what I'm trying to bait him into doing. Uh, so he kept the Alistair because he wants to protect from the boost from Joker Poison. Shizum right away, I Lava Golem everything. I'm very patient. This is turn one for me now. I go Wisdom Effect. And I know now all he has left is Florida Lee and whatever he has set. So I know there's no Nibiru. I know everything in his hand. So now I can play pretty freely. I go Wisdom, Double Iris. I get Harmonizing. Uh, still, I go Souls. Send the Oath. Send, uh, I can't draw there. Uh, no, because uh, of Prosperity. So the Joker has to come back. Uh, so that's going to go back. And then, uh, so at this point, uh, I'm going to link uh, Pendulum Summon here. Dagda set the Scythe. Special uh, Celestial. I go Baron de Florida, pop the set. He's going to try and Florida Lee negate that. But I'm going to negate the Florida Lee. And then he's going to chain Imperm on my Celestial. So I'm like, oh, that was interesting. Well, that's fine. Tornado pop that. Selene. I, I don't kill him, but I clear everything on his field with Axis Code Talker. And then uh, on my his draw phase, I Tornado hit the Scythe. And he's lost out of turns. And uh, I would have done enough damage to, to win. And then on my turn, I kill him. So what a comeback. Holy shit. If you guys aren't subbed already, you have to after that. Let's go now to the next one. Like, this is absolutely insane, bro. I'm blowing my own mind, for real. So we're going to go to the next one. This is also incredible. So we're 5-0 right now. This is the last match of day two, day one. Last match of day one. So here, again, man, man. If you Like, this is incredible. Now we lose to the die roll here against Live Twin. And uh, you're going to see a Nibiru in my man's deck. Nibiru should not be in any Live Twin player's deck. But instantly, uh, I didn't realize this right away. Like, I knew that. Look, I saw this board. I'm like, my man's getting cooked. Live Twin Challenge. I knew. Evil Twin Challenge. I knew that I was actually searched it. He has this. He has random hand traps like Valor, Imperm, that's uh, Valor, Ash, whatever. It's over. My pen call resolve. I knew instantly this duel's over. But because he's playing Cross of Designator, I assume is why he's playing Nibiru. It's probably the one of Nibiru because of Cross of Designator. And it's going to cook us hard here because I'm not playing around Nibiru. He's playing Live Twin. Live Twin players do not play Nibiru. You, the deck cannot play while that deck's out. So what do I do here? Big brain play. Instantly, I try and get him to pop my card so I could free up my pen summon. I go pen five. Easy. This duel's over. And of course, he can hit this with a Nibiru. Very unlucky because this deck shouldn't play it. But he had it because of his one cross at Detonator. But it's all good. This is just part of the duel. So I go Duelist Alliance, get pen graph. And I just hope this is enough, but it's not. <laughs> There's no way pen graph will be enough for us to, to win here. Uh, we get a token from that. He goes that at the end phase. There's just nothing we can do. There's just really nothing we can do. He uses that to send that. And I'm like, oh, man. Really? Like, we got sacked by a one of Nibiru because of Cross the Designator that this deck cannot play the Nibiru. 
But the deck does lose to Nibiru, so Cross the Designator is fair to play. Uh, at this point, he sends that. It sends our Harmonizing. We're out of Time Gazer. If we had Time Gazer left, we could scale the Time Gazer, search the Harmo, pen summon three, and probably win the duel. Legit win the duel. But sadly, we use our Time Gazer, so we couldn't uh, come back and win. And he's special. This is just GG. We're going to go to game two now. So the, our backs are against the wall, man. But guess what? Our backs were against the wall the last match. What did we do? Did we... Did we cry while our back was against the wall? Hell no. Nah. No, we focused and we won the duel. We go pen call here to search Oath and Wisdom. We get hit with a draw. Now, think of this. Put yourself in my boots. Put yourself in my shoes, okay? We just came back from DPE, Winda, Macabre, and we had three cards at our disposal. Our Duelist Alliance cannot search a pen graph. This draw is going to hurt our Duelist Alliance massively. What do we do? We don't we don't cry about it. We don't sit there and be like, oh, we lose a duel now. Oh, we lose a duel. No, no, no. We focus. We go into Brone de Floor here. Oath at Harmo. Now our, all our plays resolve. This is the play. You guys see that play right there? Where Brone de Floor was the fifth summon. And now our Needle Fiber resolves. And once Needle Fiber resolves, it's full combo. Needle Fiber, bring out Tuning Magician. Bring out Artemis. Bring out another Tuning. Bring out Dagda. That's full combo by itself. Now, I make a mistake here. I should have used Brone de Floor to pop the Wisdom Eye to uh set a scythe quickly just in case but i mean it doesn't make a big deal my opponent also misplayed by not using valor on my fiber forcing my brone de floor negate because it's only once while it's on the field so he would have not had to deal with brone de floor negate nonetheless there's nothing he can do with four live twin cards so we're just going to go ahead set that fiber special and my my, my guy here is going to set up a whole a whole wall of live twins that's just not going to be enough that's just not going to be enough we're going to pop his set. Boom. There's nothing that can be done now. He's a random ha one card left in hand. It's going to be negated by Brone de Floor. And we're just going to freely have some fun here. We're going to pop his whole board one by one. We're going to go with Selene. We're going to bring out Celestial. Can activate Synchro. Because Syn we have Synchro, can activate Monster Effects. We're going to pop both. We're going to double Iris. We're, we got the whole gang out here. Battle phase. GG. Game three now. I want you to see something. My guy has anti-spell. But he did brick, and that's what happens when you play cards like anti spell. You brick. He has no card in the field. We drew the poison. Where if he had a, where if he actually had the live twin field up, we're actually clearing anti spell even if he didn't brick. Because if he had the live twin field up, we just normal purple poison, and we're fine. Actually, no, that's false because his cards are eleven hundred attack, so we do get cooked. But anyways, we go normal Joker. He bricks again. So what we do now is. A very smart play. We normal. We go Tornado Dragon. Tornado Dragon. Pop Anti-Spell. Droplets. I'm like, okay, shit. That's all good. Enter Battle Phase. Attack. Zeus. Get everything out of there. That's why you got to play Zeus in this deck. Get everything out of there. Then, obviously, you can tell by this hand. The rest the rest is history. So, here, I'm thinking deeply. Can I play around a random Nibiru in hand? He has to have some form of hand trap for sure. But, I'm like, man, this hand just doesn't play around Nib. It's fine. We're just going to pen summon everything. He doesn't have it. So, that's it. We're going to special the Sork. I forgot to add the Joker, so we're going to add the Joker a little after. Uh, I had to Prosperity. I Prosperity away all my rank 4s, sadly. So, they're just going to have to sit there doing nothing. Uh, so, it's all good there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set. And there's no play he has. Because we have Appaloosa and Pengraft, there's no play that he actually has. So, he's going to attempt to effect. I'm going to negate with Apo. He's going to special. I'm going to Pengraft. And that's going to be GG. So, we have one. We are 6-0 after all of day one. And these are some incredible comebacks that you guys can learn from. So now we're going to go to our first match of day number two. Let's go. First match of day number two. We are 6-0. We're trying to go 8-1 and one to top. This is round number seven. Uh, this is a long video. You guys need to stay tuned for the whole video to see what's going on, especially with this deck. This deck's insane. Look at the board my guy's putting up right here. He's playing a 1-up Cosmic so because the deck does lose to Mystic Mind really hard. So he wants at least one out to Mystic Mind. Uh, so he has the Cosmic. Cosmic also stops Scythe. So that could be a reason why he's playing it as well. I think this bird deck is actually extraordinary. I really do. I think this bird deck is the only deck that rivals Pendulum's power. If I'm being honest, I think it's absolutely broken. Uh, it's just so good. It's just so good. And you have all this plus a crazy follow-up, which is just insane. So look at that. Like, there's, there's really nothing I can do. I'm not going to give up. He knows what I'm playing. He mentioned it while we were talking on Discord. Uh, so he knows what I'm playing. I'm like, I'm going to at least do my best to try this out. If he doesn't, there's a scenario here where he's like, you know what? There's a scenario where if he just says, you know what? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna just wait until uh Triff like uses all of his cards for me to negate. He could be a little lazy. This is the first match we have. So he bounces the first thing. I'm like, okay, yeah, he, he's sharp. I'm, I'm, I lose for sure. There was a scenario where if he, I, we just, he waited and waited and waited. Maybe I would have ca catch him by surprise. But there's just no scenario there where we win. So here we're going to go on to our turn here. Double prosperity is never good, obviously. So we're going to – but it's okay. We get harmonizing. I could have got the pen call. I probably should have got the pen call, but I didn't. <laughs> I probably should have, though. I'm not going to lie. But that's all right. We go Chrono Harmo. This is why. We, we knew that we were set up very easily through uh, through most of his cards. There's not much he could have done uh, to stop us. We're going to go Appalooza. We're going to add Harmonizing. We're going to make uh, set up a Dragster before the Pen Summon in case he has Imperm. Nib so we're playing through Imperm Nibiru right now. So he, he, like we're, we're fully safe. We get Dagged Up, Tornado Dragon set the scythe get the pen graph there's like we're, we're, we're set up nicely uh sadly this does lose the droplets which is obviously the only card he has we turn it he'll pop the scythe and uh maybe we should get pen call to play around droplets pen call does play around droplets but this is just insane bro he negates the oppo negates the scythe negates the dragster we need pen graph to be able if we had pen call our time star we could use pen graph, pop our oath, pop his droplets, send our scythe. Uh, but for the, all, there's always some noob that says, "Why aren't you pop your scythe with pen graph, bro?" Well, you're gonna need uh, pen call or time start to be live to send time send scythe, and the only way you do that is by sending. Uh, like if he droplets with the scythe in the field, we just send our own scythe to the grave, so it's no longer on the field. But and uh, it's just absurd what one card does. Like what one. What Turquoise Warbler, what one card does is just absolutely absurd, bro. Absolutely absurd. He just attacks this. He goes into Zeus. Look at this man's plus. Like, it's insane. He goes into Zeus. I can't target his Wind Monster with my Pen Graph because it can't be targeted. And now, like, who, like, this, no deck should be able to do this much after clearing my board with one Droplets. Actually insane. Like, <laughs> this deck's actually wild. But it's all good. Because what did I tell you guys? Never give up, right? Never give up. So here's our next play. Even after all that, we're still not giving up. We go Pros, we get Pen Call. We still are never giving up. We're going to go Pen Call here to discard. And we're going to search here. We're going to get uh, Purple Poison and Double Iris. Uh, we're going to do at this point, we're going to Pen Summon 2. Uh... He is going to bounce one of them to my hand. He bounces the Oaf. I add back Harmo. Enter battle. Purple poison. That's 2700. Uh, wait, wait. Oh, I was under pen call. Oh. oh, I remember this play very easily. So this is what we should have done. Oaf should have added Wisdom Eye. I should have normal Wisdom, attack Star Starling. And this could have been a different duel. If Starling was gone, was I think we still lose. I was out of Baguska. Baguska, I banished the Prosperity. Baguska might have saved me. Baguska could have saved me. If this was out of the field, oh my god, Baguska saved me. I'm fo so fucking sad. We could have won this duel. It was very, well, that's what we should have done. So my misplay, I, I end up losing this. This is going to be my first loss of the tournament. Oaf, should I get Wisdom Eye in that scenario? Normal Wisdom, attack to level 1. Put bo don't banish Baguska of Prosperity. Ah, uh, no, it's fair. Like, if you're going first, you, you do banish Baguska of Prosperity. So there was really nothing we could have done there. And he's going to attack directly for like 7,000 damage. And... We lose there. So now we're going to go on to round number eight against MBT. It is the Hero versus Pendulum match. Who do you guys got in this absolute battle of the Titans? Uh, let's go. So you're going to see MBT's board here. It's going to be actually quite impressive, but we're still going to easily be able to take care of it uh, because of Purple Poison. So Purple Poison, if you're dealing with a Hero board, Purple Poison is going to be vital, especially if they put up their uh, Skill Drain card, which you're going to see Plasma is going to come up here. Purple Poison is vital. Uh, we don't have it right now, but we're obviously we're going to top deck Pen Call because we're really cool and uh, nice, and we're just going to draw it. So he gets access to Mass Change, which is fine. So we're going to deal with uh, uh, DPE, uh, Plasma, and Dark Law, which is totally, like, you know, this is a, a good board. We have Dualist Alliance, so it's fine. We're going to clear this board easily. We're going to go Dualist Alliance, get Pen Call. Good play. Mass change right away. All we need is for Pen Call not to get banished off Dark Law. 
And um, uh, he gets banished, bro. What could you do? What could you do? Now we're now we're actually scared. Now at this point, without the pen call, we can't clear this because we needed the purple poison, and purple poison that cannot be destroyed by effects. Uh, time gate. Uh, we would have clear everything easily, but that's all right. So we're gonna normal here to trigger the star pen graph. He pops a star pen graph. It's a good play. Scale time gazer. I go needle fiber. Special, and I completely forgot that. Uh, <laughs> uh his my cards lose attack because of enforcer but that's all good so you go pen call he's gonna hit me with a droll in this point i'm like all right it's all good oaf iris i'm gonna pendulum too i play around the bureau here and making sure it's the fourth summon i normal the harmonizing celestial uh add i bring this out i get dagda i actually forgot to out of celestial or no i think what i did i didn't want to lose to nip valor so i used that's what I did. I didn't want to lose to Nip Valor. So I used uh, I used it right off the bat. So I don't search at the end phase. But at least what I do is I don't lose to Nip Valor. So uh, he goes Fusion Destiny. He goes Chalice. I negate. I set up Scythe. And that's it. So my, I just wanted to set up Scythe. He's going to clear this. He's going to clear that. I'm going to draw one. And uh, he's going to pop those. This is totally fine. All I want to make sure is that he can't pen summon or summon from extra deck after that. So he sets up as much as he possibly could, but uh, you know it was a respectable play. But without him having his extra deck, uh, there's not much heroes can do. He sets up a massive wall, and uh, it just won't be enough. He pops my oath, but I top deck wisdom because I'm nice. I get Harmo with Star Pengraph, and I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna put up Needle Fiber. Uh, I go Needle Fiber summon. I summon Celine. I was, there was one unknown card, I believe. So I don't even want to risk to see what he has. I go search uh, Sork, pop Iris. I go Appaloosa. His board here should be no problem. So I just want to play around with Appaloosa uh, just in case he has the one off random nib. So I put these up. At this point, I recognize he probably just doesn't have nib. I go Celine, special souls, access code. I pop everything. I'm like, yo, he doesn't have nib. There's no way. So I just pop everything into battle. I'm going to attack for game. Uh, he, he uses that and they give that Palooza and we're gonna go to game three over here This is a super long video, but I don't care. I want to show you guys this I think it's a really cool idea where you guys can just see a full tournament recap full replays of absolutely everything with pendulums This will be such a great resource for any pendulum player. So uh, MBT here. It seems like he's opened the stones It seems but it's okay because we have pen call and as you guys know pen call is gonna deal with uh, all these problems so we don't have access to our Sphere Mode Lava Golem Dark Ruler, but we do have Prosperity, and you already know what it is. Prosperity is definitely going to draw, search us, our out to his massive board. So he goes Poly. He's going to uh, set up a solid, solid board here. He goes Prosperity. He gets Chalice of the Only Interruption. So we're going to have to deal with Chalice Droplets plus whatever board he puts up. So that, 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 that is pretty uh, huge, man. Not just the whole board, but on top of the board, Chalice and Droplets. So he goes Chalice, Droplets, Plasma, DPE. Okay, no problem. Pen call. So I pen call first to bait the ash. If pen call got ashed, uh, I wanted prosperity to resolve to get something huge. So we now we know we got pen call. That now we go this. All three of the bad boys are up there. Severe mode, lava golem, and dark ruler. If I get lava golem, he will use DPE effect right away to pop his own card, and then uh, we can't get rid of the plasma. So I get dark ruler right away. So I go dark ruler. Sadly, we don't have access to harmonizing. Uh, why don't, I don't even know why, oh, I, I didn't search harmonizing because we, uh, in the scenario where dark, where we did not search the out to, I should have probably prosperity first. That's what I should have done. But in the scenario where we didn't search dark ruler or lava golem, harmonizing was useless and we needed a way to out everything with poison and double iris. So that's why I didn't do that. So here I, I just special one and normal one. Also I want to save my normal summon. So star pengraph will search harmonizing on poison, leaving the field chalice fibers effects negated. We're going to Pendulum 2. I go Harmonizing. He goes Droplets right away. So the reason he goes Droplets right away, it is a great play that he does. If I went Harmonizing Oaf Dragon, I go Brone to Floor. Brone to Floor pop. Now he has to deal with the whole Brone to Floor in the field. And uh, I look at what I banished. I got, got rid of Time Star and Tornado Dragon. Very sad that I got rid of Time Star because Time Star would be doing some massive work for me. Time Star goes Souls, Selene, Access Code. Uh, access Code stupid because, yeah. But anyways, so I go Baguska. We're on time, I believe. So uh, I believe mine was turn zero. This is turn one for him. Baguska, all I'm trying to do here is uh, uh, try and make it so he can't do much damage through Baguska. And any, even if he were to clear my Baguska, 
there's just no way that he'll be able to win. Uh, he has one last turn after this, and I know both cards in his hand. So I'm going to normal summon, I'm going to go Celine, and this will be over for him. MBT, you know, he did his best. He actually fought very admirably there in an attack for game. That was a great match. MBT impressed me. Both boards he put up were actually very impressive. And we're going to go into round 9 now. So this is against uh, Tubble Blue. This is also an incredible match here. You guys will see this. I need to win this match to move on. I uh, I believe we're on the table 5 here in the last round. So I'm pretty sure that even if I lose, I still top. But I do want to win and do my best so MBT could also top as well as tiebreakers so he goes first here desires really cocks him hard so we're not gonna have to deal against a, a pretty huge board here uh he's gonna go uh fact there to get that uh the second i didn't see avion at barrier statue i knew that he uh, desires really cocked him hard can we see what he got rid of yeah apex avion got banished and uh some other stuff as well so let's go apex avion uh, at this point i go joker to get wisdom eye resolution we get hit with droll droll hurts his hand a lot because we obviously have double spells so what are we going to do here we're going to chronograph effect to put time gaze on the scale because we're going to need it uh i don't opt to special the sork i go uh, right away into dagda i put wisdom i want Dagda to stay on the field uh oaf dragon uh effect add wisdom instantly he bounces the dagda uh because he doesn't want me to get a free uh so many cards summoned out there i go attack with joker uh i attack with sork and I just set up a Tornado Dragon. I put Star Pengar in case he finds a way to... Uh, in just in case he opted to get a follow-up instead of Avion. I just scale it just in case in that scenario. So end phase, he actually can't add Burkhal because he, he's also under Droll. I Tornado right away in the draw phase. So I, he hits me with a Droll. I hit him with a Scythe, which is pretty hilarious. So now I'm going to go Prosperity. Now I'm going to do a very big brain play here, okay? I go Prosperity, Search... My prosperity was actually horrible. I should have normal wisdom, link to search with star pengraph, but I really need a tuner here really badly. So even though I don't have a tuner, it's okay. I get rid of both of his cards there. I link these into Celine. I do a big brain play here. Celine special joker. I put these into Dagda. Uh, I'm going to pass my turn to him. So uh, it, right when he uses Neville effect uh, for four, I'm going to use the effect of Celine here to special Sork. Sork effect to pop my Dagda. Dagda effect triggers to special the Scythe. And uh, I pop everything on my field possible for a follow-up because he's going to banish my stuff. So I Scythe lock him. So even though he summoned this, he can't do anything else afterwards. So he, he draws me twice. I Scythe him twice. Let's go. <laughs> it's hilarious. I actually pulled that off. So now we have four cards in hand. Uh, they, the duel, this duel's over now. Uh, he has all Lyra Lust cards in his hand. I pen summon. I'm playing around the Nibiru, so I pen only four. Uh, I use the Celestial effect, uh, so you can't use any any uh, monster effects either. And I add it to end phase. I put these into Time Star. Uh, I uh, search Chronograph. A very big brain play here. I go Chronograph uh, with Time Star effect. T uh, a double Iris, double damage for Time Star. Special Chronograph. Uh, special Harmonizing. I make a misplay here. Uh, access code pop everything is game. But I didn't, I thought for some reason, <coughs> I thought for some reason that Simorg can't be destroyed by effects either. So it's just a very stupid play where access code was just very easily game. But that was my, my mistake. I just didn't didn't really catch that. Uh, I thought this was game as well, but it won't because Poison can't pop anything because Simorg's still on the field before it gets destroyed. So I'm going to put him uh, basically at no cards, but it's fine because who needs to OTK when you could just FTK uh, three turns in a row. So I set up a massive board here. I added the end phase. I'm set up nicely. And then on his standby phase, he's Brun the Floor Effect. The special Scythe for a third time. <laughs> Absolutely insane. So now we're going to go to round number two. I need to draw one of my side cards. Without my side cards, I cannot play against him whatsoever. Uh, he does have Imperial Order. And uh, that first match was like 30, like 45 minutes long. It was absolutely insane. Uh, I do need to draw Serum or Lava Golem or Dark Ruler or else we're absolutely cooked. Uh, so you're going to see his end board here. Drawing just one of them secures victory. That's all we needed to see. Excuse me. It's late out here in Toronto, boys. It's late out here. So he's going to put that. And uh, this card is the Pendulum Killer right here. The Pendulum Killer. Like I said, Sphere Mode, Lava Golem, Dark Ruler. Just one of them. We win the duel. Uh, he does have Imperial Order where we realize it there. Once I see the Imperial Order, I'm like, okay. All I got to do, is, I think turn uh, time was called, I believe, at this point. Or at least very soon. I use this to add at the end phase. It's at 1500. So I'll pop both. He bounces. I go Baguska. Uh, because he's forced to. He's going to take 700. And now with Baguska. He's actually forced to bounce this. And not bounce my pen graph. 
So I just have to pray that my pen grabs enough to let me survive. And next turn, I kill him. This is just my, my uh, reasoning there. And I probably should have searched wisdom. At that point, also, I realized I, lo I just can't win. And time was called. So I was like, man, th there's just no way I'm winning this. Because uh, uh, he's at least going to do, th like, 4,000 damage, if not kill me. So we end up drawing there. And so we're 7 one, one We end up topping. And now we go to top cut. So now this is my top cut match. And as I said, we do end up losing this because we're top 16. I hate to break to you guys, but, like, it's the title. Uh, this is our top 16. So... Uh, I go first here. I go pen call, discard pen call. He's playing uh, Orchid, go second Orchist. Uh, so it's a cool deck, go second Orchist Machina. So I, I play around Nibiru here. I get this. There's nothing you can do. I could play around Nibiru and drop with this hand. There's no way he wins this, obviously. Uh, and then we go Scythe, Pen Graph, and uh, Search Joker and Phase. There's really nothing you could do. Prosp. I'm like, sure. Effect of this. He gets the Mystic Mind. I'm like, okay, I'll be aware of this Mystic Mind. I will play around all his cards to ensure that uh, that Mystic Mind does not resolve. Pop Scythe. There's nothing you can do at this point. There's really nothing. I pop the Machina Fortress so my Baron can negate the Mind. And th there's nothing he can do. He's going to put some cards up for s safety. I just pop everything. He has that. I'm like, that's fine. Uh, Needle Fiber. Selene. Appalooza, I'm not going to even play if he has a lot of hand traps. I don't even want to wait and figure out. Appalooza, GG. So I win game one here, now game two. My hand's actually very nice for game two. And there there was a there was a world where I could have win this. Uh, this duel here, where you guys recognize two tuning magicians in my hand, this duel actually convinced me to play uh, two tuning magician instead of three in my main deck. I will be showcasing the deck list I've done in this video and also my updated deck list of what I changed. But, man, this tuning magician was something legit. I'm going to show you guys how, like, if I had six pendulum cards, I'm clapping this whole whole board. I go pros for three. He goes to that. I'm like, this is fine. I get harmonizing. This is a good scenario here, okay? So what I do here is I pen call for this. What I should be doing is getting one low scale, one high scale. Very simple. For some stupid, yeah, so I get one low scale, one high scale. Perfect. All right. Next, all his interruptions are weak. Like, they're not real interruptions, you know? They're, like, just random, like, one of interruptions. So he sends my oath. At this point, I make a massive misplay that actually cost me the entire duel. I should be special summoning Tuning Magician right now. He said that Purple Poison is okay. Okay, I should special Tuning Magician, make Needle Fiber. Needle Fiber, he imperms or some things. And then I just pen summon my whole oath dragon harmonizing. I just pen summon all that. And I save Joker for last. Like an idiot, I normal Joker. He imperms. And because now he knows I have one harmonizing in hand... He knows that. He unicorns away my poison. What a misplay, bro. What an absolute idiotic misplay. Like, if I just special the 2D Magician first, he'll be forced to hand trap the Needle Fiber, and I just pen summon and win and save the Joker for last. Let this be a lesson, man. Don't normal Joker right away. Let this be, like, save it for end in this scenario. So I'm forced to scale Harmonizing to be able to special the 2D Magician. And I'm actually so pissed at this point. I'm like, bro, and if this was just anything else, man, so disappointing. Droplets gets rid of my needle fiber. I'm like, bro, fuck, man. Nothing we could do there. We go Celine. We special this, uh, that from hand. We have to clear this. Yeah, if we well, there was no way to clear it. If we went, uh, if we clear this one, Appaloosa, we probably won the duel. But there was no way to do that. I thought so hard. Th there was just no way. So now at this point, he needs to top deck a monster because if he goes World One to special one of these, it's his only play. So we're still all good. And he goes Succession. Oh my god, the top deck. I I'm so salty. I'm like, bro, what could you do, man? Like, what could you do in that scenario? And there's no way to save us. And, and he has three cards in extra deck. I'm just trying to really, like, like play as far as I can. I draw Scythe. I'm like, fuck. What I should have done even here was special tuning, tribute Scythe, kill Lib, and uh, try and wait until I draw Pengraf for Duelist Alliance. That's really my only out in this scenario because uh, he has no extra deck left. And there's just nothing I can do here. That Joker play haunted us. Now, I want you guys to see something insane, okay? I want you guys to see something absolutely wild. So he has Nib Imperm. Girsu, of course. He opened absolute urgent schedule. Like, he opened absolutely broken. But our hand actually plays around all of this. I'm going to show you guys how. So pen call, we get rid of that. Okay, this is what we should have done. This is a misplay. What we should have done here was pen call. Instead of instead of Chronograph Sorcerer, we, we should have pen call Chronograph Sorcerer. Sorry, one sec. We got Iris and and Oaf, right? 
I'm going to replay this one. Give me one second, guys. There's a way to play around Nib Imperm. I'm going to show you guys right now. We're going to fast forward to game three again. Okay. This is what you do, okay? And, of course, you don't know he has Nib Imperm, but this is what you should have done. Okay, okay. So, this is what you do. This is what you do. Did I play this properly? Let me calculate. Okay, so this is what we do. We, yeah, okay. I got it. Pen call. You discard the Harmo. Do you discard the Harmo? Joker. Let me calculate. If you get Joker... I think you pen call the chronograph. And you get Celestial. Celestial's a must. So you get Ulf and Celestial. Yeah, okay. That's what you do. That's what you do. That's what you do. Okay, that's what you do. Uh, You have to keep the double iris to play around... Um, You keep the double iris to play around droplets. Okay? So, what you do is you pen call... Okay. You need a Celestial in here somewhere. Okay. We need a Celestial. So the iris should be Celestial. Okay. Or at least if a Joker got Celestial, let me calculate. Yeah, there was, there was no way. Or if we pen some in the Harmonizing, I normal the, don't normal the Joker here. We're not even playing through Nib in this scenario. I make a huge misplay because, look, Joker, if you normal Joker, you know how normally we go Bro on the Floor, Oath Dragon Effect, add the Harmonizing, normal Harmonizing, go to Needle Fiber? Well, if you normal Joker, you can't do that. That's why in that scenario where you're trying to set up your Nib Protection, you actually have to... Uh, maybe even have Celestial as well. So, like, don't normal the Joker in this scenario. Keep the Joker in hand. Don't normal summon. Uh, what we should have done was have a Harmonizing on the field, a Celestial on the field. We shouldn't have used Joker effect to get the extra Oath Dragon. We should have a Joker, uh, a Harmonizing, a Celestial, and any random monster. And another Harmonizing. It doesn't matter. And then in that scenario, Harmonizing brings out Oath Dragon. You make Brone to Floor. Or a celestial effect right away while Bro on the floor is on the field. They're forced to nib imperm on the spot. And then you just Oath Dragon effect at harmonizing from your from your extra deck. Normal summon that harmonizing. The harmonizing and the token make needle fiber. Artemis Magician. Artemis Magician, you go into Link One. Uh sorry, I mean uh Tony Magician with Artemis. Special back, you make Dagda Scythe uh through Nibiru Veiler, Nibiru Imperm. So this board here we actually should be having uh, uh very easily to be honest we should be having a through nib imperm uh but this is a huge misplay i don't even play on the nib it's absolutely insane we should at this point have uh needle fiber and needle fiber and his imperm's gone N nib's gone we have uh dagda and needle fiber so he act he normal summon scrap recycler we go needle fiber set up his whole combo he can't do anything clearly he can't play through scythe lock and we have cards, bear cards in hand to kill him. So, misplay costs us the match. Absolutely ridiculous, bro. I was trying to play around droplets so hard, and I didn't think of Nib. Oh, I did think of Nib, obviously. But I thought to myself, I was like, man, I play around Nib every game. What's the chance that he has it, that I get hit with Nib again? Unfortunate. This is the deck list that I use in the tournament. Uh, the changes I would make, I'm going to show you guys in a bit. I do think Celestial Magician is absolutely mandatory at 3. You must play Celestial Magician at 3. Tuning Magician, you can play at 2. Uh, you don't want to open multiples. Souls is cuttable if you want it. If you don't really want it. Sork is not that mandatory at 3. Celestial is absolutely, absolutely incredible. You need to play at 3. And one White Wing might not be that bad. Uh, I do want to play DPE. It works out well. This is my updated list, as you guys see. So in my updated list, I'm playing DPE. The reason why is it synergizes so damn well with the entire deck. Uh, three Sork, three Celestial are just so good. The reason why White Wing is good is when Harmonizing Magician, uh, when you already have access to Oath Dragon or ways to get it, you may or you need a tuner. Harmonizing specials out the White Wing, and then uh, you still make your Baron de Floor slash Savage Dragon negate if it's late game. And then you still have a tuner uh, to go Needle Fiber combos. Uh, Dragon Pit uh, we also play a dra uh, Savage Dragon now, so. Uh, that's another reason why Dragon Pit and White Wing are both like, ways to get it. Because sometimes Tuning Magician sits in your graveyard at the end, end of your combo. So if a Dragon Pit just comes out from the harmonizing sometimes, if you don't need it, it's just a free Savage. So it's cool to come up. And DPE works very well. And as you see, no Chronograph, no Extenders. Because the best way to play around uh, Nib uh, Nibiru is no longer Extenders, but instead Baron the Floor. Thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to go check out the beautiful Black Friday special where you get three trip play maps for the price of two. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!